Josh Looney of the 2012 MIAA Media Day in downtown Kansas City. Jerry Partridge, Missouri Western head coach, 16th season, come off a 9-3 and three year, 7-2 and two MIAA, and a playoff appearance. How do you feel about your squad going forward? Um, we've got a lot of kids that have played a, a lot of games in the MIAA back, and I think it helps you. I mean, uh, the, and we need it because there's so many people in, in, this, in our schedule that are uh, higher level that type teams. I mean, the best teams um, that you could possibly play, we seem to have gotten them. You know, I don't think we got any, any breaks with the schedule makers. I look at you, you're picked to finish third uh, in the preseason poll, and that might as well make you a top 10 program in, in the country if you're third in the MIAA. You're and top he, five in the MIAA. <laughs> yeah. And 19 returning starters to the, the squad. Uh, a lot of big expectations in St. Joseph? I think so, but I think that uh, we have we have personal expectations every year anyway. We we put that kind of pressure on ourselves every year. So uh, we've been right there in the hunt all the time for about a decade now. And so, uh, you know, just a matter of the hard part is you play a, a squad like Central Missouri right off the bat. Last year we played Pittsburgh State first game. And so that's the, the hard part about a, a conference-only type of schedule is you're going to play somebody very difficult right off the bat that there's history with, there's emotion with, and, and that makes it more difficult. Yeah, gone are the days of, of scheduling maybe a, a lower-level squad or, or a non-conference team, and it kind of gets you ready and see where you're at. What kind of test does that give you right away, and, and what will you find out about your program? More tests than I want to have, to be honest <laughs> with you. I, I'm, I'm more of the Bill Snyder school. I mean, I, I, I tell, I'd rather do it. But uh, we've, um, you know, and, and really we're talking about two games a lot of times that you get to play right off the bat. Uh, now, some schools like Northwest, when Mel was there, they would schedule whoever, and he would just go play somebody, and who cares, and you lose, and you go, if you lose a game, you just build on it. Uh, I'm not of that belief. I think you try to get as many ones as you can, but um, it's going to be difficult. I mean, and, and we even, within our schedule, like we go to Fort Hayes on their tell great thing. I found out we're at Northeastern Oklahoma's homecoming. Uh, you know, it's just all the little <laughs> right. twists in there uh, make it more difficult. But we've, we've got, a, like I said, a, a, you know, a, a challenge-worthy uh, team. Uh, I think our kids are hungry to win. And the key is to be hungry to win week in and week out. You know, uh, you don't have to play all 11 teams on your schedule the first day. They're not going to line up, you know, f you know, Washburn, Pitt, and Northwest against us right there all one day. Uh, we get to do it one at a time. And our ability to function at a high level week in and week out is going to be the key. Interesting family connection with your program. You played for your father. And you're not I actually did not play for my father. Did not play for your father. No, he okay. coached at Ruskin. I coached. At, I played at Grandview. So okay. Well, you're still coaching your son. I thought it was your morning. I thought you no. played for your father and your coach. He tried your son. to avoid that because <laughs> he knew I was going to be uncoachable. How, how is it coaching coaching your son, especially at the quarterback position? Sometimes great. Uh, sometimes <laughs> not as good. Uh, if it's not going very good that day, um, he. I am his dad. Believe it or not, I'm not his head. I'm not the head coach to him. Uh, some things that I have said in the past and got away with other kids. I don't necessarily get away with it with him, um, and 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 his my ability maybe to adjust to coaching him is more important than him being able to be coached by me. The beauty of it is I'm not really the quarterback coach. I coach defense and and a lot of special teams, and I just kind of oversee offensively. But Tyler Fenwick, my offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, does a great job. Him and Travis have a tremendous relationship, um, and I just kind of need to stay out of the way, coach situations a little bit. And, and motivate him throughout the off season, to be honest with you, which I do. I put a lot of pressure on him in the off season, but I'm very proud of him. And it's it's I need to step back and and, and enjoy getting to coach him. And not many people get to do that. I ask these coaches they come in, uh, how do you replace such and such quarterback or this linebacker? I'm going to ask you about your kicker because it's not every day you, you get a kicker drafted as Western did and. When 50-plus yard field goals were automatic for you in years past, so, so how do you go about uh, replacing what were automatic points from? Well, we only had him one year. So he was at Nebraska Omaha for three, and we got him. Evidently, we we're the very first people to let him try a 50-yarder, but he was nine of nine from 50 plus, five of five in the two Northwest games. Uh, he was a tremendous talent. I told a booster uh, club right after the season was in, I said, "Do not count on that ever happening again. We'll never have that kind of talent at that position ever again. <laughs> we're going to be good there." But uh, I, I don't think Greg's just NFL good. I think Greg was maybe Hawaii good. I think he's that good a kicker. Yeah, especially he's a dome in St. Louis. Yeah, well, I don't think it matters <laughs> to him. He played swirly winds in the MIAA. There were no domes. Well, he, what did you see him kick inside in your indoor? He bombed him out there. I mean, he's, yeah. he's kicked um, he kicked a 70-yarder pregame against Northwest with his little tee. We were going to try a 67-yarder against Northwest in a regular season game. They were out of timeouts. And – we were on the sideline. I told Travis, I said, do not throw an incomplete pass because we're going to let him run down and kick it. He threw an incomplete pass. 
so uh, you know there's 20 seconds yeah. so I wasn't gonna, I wasn't that much of a riverboat gambler they were gonna try it then but uh, he was a special young man and and uh, uh, Coach Fisher's getting to enjoy him now. Three players right now in NFL camps that are uh, Western alums. What does that say about your program and? And where do you guys hope to go and continue to build? I'd say we've picked the right players. That's what's helping a little bit. Um, I, I think we'll have four for sure this time next year, long as those two of those guys continue to make it. I think Greg will be in a camp. Roger Allen and Gian Robinson, I think, got a shot to make teams this time. Uh, I think David Bass is that caliber kid, our DN. Uh, he's six foot five, you know, two sixty five, runs a four six. I think our running back Michael Hill may be that caliber too. So uh, I don't know. I, I you know I just I think we're very fortunate to have those kids come along at this time and. I don't know if it's anything we're doing. It's just probably getting lucky. Do, do you find it easier to recruit with, with the facilities you have there now comparatively? Cause absolutely. You, yeah. Absolutely. You've we, experienced both sides of it. We had some of the crappiest facilities you could possibly have. Uh, I think probably we were at the, the bottom of the rung in that area, and now we're at the very top of it. And, and you can see the kids' faces light up when they see it. Uh, it's a huge deal. Good luck to you this year, Coach. Uh, thanks.